I'm Chuck Norris, president of the United Fine Arts Federation. This is Danny Lane. The history of martial arts can be traced back more than a thousand years, starting in China, then migrating to Okinawa, Japan, and then Korea. Taekwondo, the Korean national sport and primary method of self-defense in that country, means punch and kick art. The youngs, here in America called forms, are the foundation and base of all martial arts disciplines, especially Taekwondo. A dance-like routine, almost mechanical in its application, the techniques are taught by masters all over the world and interpreted as an imaginary fight between the practitioner and a multitude of opponents in a complete circle. Besides teaching the practitioner balance, timing, breath control, footwork, memory recall, and expressing the artistic expression of their physical techniques, what do all the different techniques and movements really mean? They seem almost senseless to de dedicate years of perfecting each young. During this video series, this is what we're going to find out, the secrets of Taekwondo Hyung. Hello, I'm Danny Lane, National Director of World Martial Arts Center, Six Degree Black Belt in the Chuck Norris United Fighting Arts Federation, and Master in Taekwondo. And welcome to my video series on the hidden secrets of Taekwondo. During this video series, I'm going to pass on what I feel are the real self-defense interpretations and applications of all the basic fundamentals the Yangs, and the complete fighting system of Taekwondo. I think you'll be amazed. I hope this will educate you and enlighten and also open up a whole new world of knowledge in your study of Taekwondo. This videotape will cover the advanced uh, Yangs in the Taekwondo and Tong Sudo system. Starting out with Basai. Ms. Amy Ashworth will now demonstrate Basai uh, individually. Basai means penetrating a fortress, so it's a very strong defensive form. A lot of defenses involved in this particular form. So, uh, ready stance, if you will. Attention bow. Hands to the opening. Set. Every individual move has a special meaning. Balance move, down. Okay, up. Twist and cross. And first move. With a key eye. Ready? One, two. Turn. One, two. Block one, two, three. Set. Slow and easy. Spear. Punch, twist, punch, twist. Cross stance up down the center line and chop. Step forward, chop, and chop. Back one. Cross high. Side kick, bottom fist with key yeah. and chop. Move forward, chop. Step back one. 
Break the hold, strike, jump punch. Turn double defense, grab, squeeze, twist, shift, pull out, again, inside, inside crescent, one, leading hand, back hand, crescent, one and two. Cast stance, double punch, set, crossover, crescent kick, double punch, set, crossover, spin, drop down, shift, step center line, to the right, and back center. Return ready stance, and down. Good. As you can see, it's a very complicated form, very in-depth, a lot of twisting, a lot of movements. This is generally one of the uh, first level black belt forms. And now we'll break down all the interpretation, if you will. Once again, as you'll see in all the Pyongan forms, a lot of the moves are repetitious of the previous form, but just like in every martial arts training, the fundamentals are the foundation. Then the forms are the combinations of the fundamentals, just put in different sequences of order. Also, uh, the creators of the form, no one knows exactly what they had on their mind, but with bits and pieces of information, uh, and all through the experimentation and studies of, of all the different martial artists, you can see that there are some really nice movements uh, hidden inside the forms. Now the opening, covering the fist with a hand in some circles means non-aggression. If you, if you show your fist, uh, it means aggression. But if you cover your fist, it means a passive posture. But in this particular form, uh, also it can be, uh, it means that there are pressure points inside the hand as well. So if somebody grabs you or shakes their fist at you or so forth, and you cover their hand uh, uh, like this. If you grab their hand and you strike ah. and you apply pressure just behind the fourth knuckle, it can be a self-defense move. So you've got your hand covered in. Or if they grab your chest and you hold their hand against your chest and you attack right here, then that's a self-defense uh, move itself. Right behind the fourth knuckle is a, a very painful pressure point that we go into. If we uh, shift to the cross stance, shifting to the cross stance gives us added power and leverage into that. So anytime you're shifting into a stance, you're shifting your body weight for, for a particular reason. So just the meaning itself, coming up and down like this, has a self-defense meaning of coming down. You're coming here and then down to this particular position. This particular position can mean a number of things. Uh, first of all, shifting a cross stance can be a back fist to the nose with this hand guiding. If the fingers are out enough, it can be a simultaneous spear hand. So you can see the, the techniques are getting more devastating and so forth. If the hands come in this angle, like this, then you would sandwich the head together with a strike on one side of the face, the jaw supporting the head with the other side. So when you're coming in with the move from here and you're lunging, so you can either strike here or you can strike here. The form pretty much comes into this position. So a lot of times, a lot of people don't really see what they're doing there. They say, well, we're doing a reinforced back knuckle, and that possibly could be true. But again, if your fingertips stick out a little bit, you can see that the spear hand is possible there. Or if the hands happen to come together, that the self-defense application could be this. Somebody grabs you, shifting, and you've got the same movement here attacking the bicep and tricep muscle coming in with the hand. So that particular movement, just shifting from a ready stance or twisting cross stance forward into the movement, coming this way or that way, has a lot of different applications. This to this means grabbing here and down, attacking into the pressure point behind the fourth knuckle, activating the wrist points, uh, even makes it more devastating. So covering your hand uh, is maybe a signal that when your hand is right here, that this is where you go, you're going to attack when that person grabs you here. You're going to attack behind the fourth one and bring it down because right here is your center of energy. So it's a self-defense move by itself. So that's when we get to play around with. The next movements after here are you doing your half spin. So if somebody grabs you from behind, like I said, bonsai means penetrating a fortress. And a fortress is strong and has a, is built for defense. So the defense is the turns. Uh, just grab anyway from here. The turns are blocking. And this can also be a block or a strike. 
So you, maybe the first move you could do would be just to knock the hands off, and the second one would be your counter strike. Let's do it from this angle, if you will. Two hands, if you will. So that you're turning, blocking, and then using as a strike. This doesn't always have to be a block. It also could be a back fist there. It depends on what you want to do with it. But if you play with these moves enough, you can see the importance of the movements. In the form from this position, uh, you'll be behind the next sequence of moves is a turn to the right with an inside defense and then another outside defense. So you have a lot of defenses, knocking hands off and then striking. If somebody grabs in, then you're doing uh, chest-wise low defense. Over in here, we have the inside defense and another outside defense. So these can be used as strikes and strikes or defenses, grab again, defenses. So look at them several different ways. Settling in right here. Uh, once again, anytime the hands are on the hips, you can be in a coda gosh position or a wrist throw position, or you could just be preparing for the next sequence of moves. Now, this next count of moves, which is a spear hand and then a punch and then a twisting outside defense and a punch and an outside defense, a lot of people interpret those as blocks. But to stay in a straddle stance and block all these techniques without strikes, doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but if you look at them as rapid fire strikes, then they can be devastating. I'll practice at this angle. The first strike would be here, then here, then here, then here, and then here. So you work, if you view them all as strikes, then you're starting to put your combinations together, just like you would in, in actual fighting. So you got spear, one, two, three, four then it starts making sense to you. Instead of looking at them as blocks, look at them as all as strikes. Rapid fire strikes, working the throat, the solar plex, the nose, etc. The next center line forms are the center chops, which we've covered. So we come down, uh, we uh, come in front, if you will, and throw us uh, right, go center chop, left, center chop, another right center chop, and he throws a left, and we back up one. And we back up one and stretch him out. Now, the cross block here can be interpreted primarily it's against stick fighting. We use it a lot in uh, bow techniques. But we can just use the arm if you want. Or go ahead and get a bow if you will. But what we're doing here is when we come back to the chop, we're coming up to a cross stance and blocking. You'll see that the arm is diagonal, so the bow staff, if it does hit, will slide down as opposed to just uh, fracturing the arm. We'll do it at this angle here. But as soon as we come in and, and block, we're able to come up and block and grab and then side kick and release the stick. It's a very simple movement. A lot of people just misinterpret it. When you block and then this hand grabs and then you side kick and pull the hands down and you go into your next move. So that's one interpretation, one self-defense move against the stick coming up. It's the block, grab with the left, pull and kick to make them release it. Turning to the rear in the Basai form are two center chops, which we basically already explained. The next set of moves is a frontal attack coming up, this way, out, and down. So if somebody grabs you, first rule of self-defense is step back. Come up, break the hold, double kidney shot to the back in here. The kidneys is one of the weakest, most devastating uh, target areas of the body in here. The jump lunging punch is basically no more than just a balance move. But if you kick, and then you push the person back, then you <laughs> jump and hit them. The interpretation there basically is just for the skill involved, or just for, I think, the artistic expression of the doing the moves. But what I get out of this is, or if it's a front bear hug in here, you come inside, you're up, you strike, and then you jump and punch. So you can see that there's a self-defense move in there against either a grab or a front bear hug. The uh, double defense, coming in here, we covered on the previous tape, we are grabbing the groin, twisting, pulling out. This is a creative movement, just basically a uppercut punch. Coming in to the inside defense, we basically covered before, uh, two hand grabs, we've covered it like this, one grab, we've covered it like this, or we've covered it like this with a crescent kick. Okay, whenever you're ready, you can go ahead. 
I'll just be turning from here. Once again, when you're spinning in the form, coming in, knocking the defense off, or coming in, working on the arm, or just twisting and coming right up to the side of the head with your defense. Anytime you're doing this defense, it can mean a number of things. You're looking uh, internally inside each movement of at least three interpretations. A lot of times things are simple, maybe intermediate, more advanced. So, you know, you try got to look for all the possibilities of the form. The crescent kick comes next. We cover it in the form, kick in the face, and stomping with a bottom fist. A very effective move. Uh, in the Pyongyang Odon form on the previous tape, we had the backhand strike, the grab, and the elbow or the crescent kick and the elbow after that. What's different in the Basai form, if you'll come at this angle, after you do the after you do the backhand and the hair grab and the kick to the face and the elbow here, there's you bring it down, there's a punch and then another punch. So the move goes one, two. So you have a punch and then punch is our interpretation of the form. If somebody grabs you from the side over here, we shift to a cat stance to a cup and saucer and then step out and do a double punch. This interpretation could be shifting here and then stepping up into here, simultaneous movement. Punch either to the face and groin or if you want, you can go a little lower into the sternum or rib cage area. So this particular movement, if I just shift to a cat stance, come into my movement, and then move to my forward stance, my offensive move, then you have that particular movement. It's followed up at that particular point with a crescent kick, sorry, the crescent kick, and then another double punch. So all the movements are involved, hands off of your kodagashas or your wrist throws, wrist lock positions, and your double punches. Growing face, or face, or you can even go here, depending on what target areas that you want to do. In spinning in the form, dropping down into your low defense, a lot of times if you're on the ground in a uh, particular combat situation, uh, particularly a lot of people may be attacking you. This also shows flexibility, it shows strength, but if I'm in this position, you also, also have to have balance. So if the person's kicking at me from this position, I can use my forearm to defend. And the other one here, and I shift, and I'm blocking at this particular position. Standing up against the defense over here. So in the form, you're defending in all different directions. But pretty much in the Basai form, those are the new movements that haven't been covered before in the previous uh, five Pyongyang forms, which are the